Hello everyone, welcome to episode 7 of the Kara Khan vs Everything speedrun. In this series we play two 10 minute plus 5 second rapid games on chess.com and whether I have the white pieces or the black pieces I'm going to be playing a Kara Khan-esque setup, specifically trying to avoid London setups especially with the white pieces. Of course it could transpose to openings like the Slav, but the idea is that we get a Kara Khan structure so that I can try and explain my thought process to you guys so that you can better play the Kara Khan in your own games or literally just enjoy the video. As I'm playing, I'll be trying to explain my thought process so that you guys can understand what I'm thinking and implement some of the same ideas into your own games. And then in the post-game analysis after each game, I'll be delving a bit deeper into the lines that I was looking at, where the engine thinks I was going right, where the engine thinks I was going wrong, and everything will be time stamped below. I would encourage you to stick around for the analysis, but feel free to skip that if you want to. Anyway, with that being said, let's get into game one. All right, we're facing a fellow, well, he might not actually be British. He might be from Scotland or Northern Ireland, I suppose, or Wales. No, Wales counts as Britain. So does Scotland. Anyway, Glendavoy, C3. It's technically the Saragossa opening. And my opponent lets us go into what is essentially a reverse Karo Khan. Except we're a move ahead because we have white. So there isn't a pawn on D5 or a knight on F6 or a knight on C6. As it would most likely be if the board was flipped. So my opponent goes D6, which is interesting, because he's offering a trade of pawns and then a trade of queens so that his king can no longer castle. I don't think I want to do that. Uh, I think knight f3 is probably the move I want to play to attack this pawn. If he advances to e4, we could hop to g5, but I don't think I love that because he probably just plays a move like d5 and my knight looks a bit silly. If knight to f3, e4, knight to d2, I suppose that's a French-like structure. Really, the best move is probably e4. Um, but I don't know whether I should play that because it feels like it's not really in the spirit of the Karo Khan. So I'm going to try and stay faithful to Karo Khan ideas and play knight to f3 instead, just because I think it will be more beneficial as we'll play, you know, more Caro slash French-esque uh, structures like this. So like I said, we could put the knight here on g5, but yeah, I don't think that's very good. We're going to drop the knight back to d2. Probably going to play moves like e3, c4. c4 straight away is probably okay, but I think I might start with e3. Just so my bishop controls the c4 square. I want to play moves like c4, knight c3, queen b3. And this kind of just looks like a good French to me. This, to me, seems like a good version of the French defense. So let's go knight c3. These are just typical moves. We're just putting a lot of pressure on the center. And we're probably going to bring our queen out to b3 to target b7 and add more pressure to d5. The move f3 may exist in some positions to try and break apart the black center. But, you know, there's no need to rush that because it is obviously weakening of the e3 pawn and the diagonal to my king and the f-file potentially. So, you know, we want to play that only if we're sure about it. <clears throat> I think at an opportune moment, if he doesn't take us, then we'll probably take him. My opponent goes bishop to a3. So, sorry, not a3, b4, to attack my knight that is obviously pressuring his center. I would normally like this bishop out on g5 to be pinning this knight. It's sort of doing the same thing that his bishop's doing to my knight. But obviously we didn't get the opportunity to do that because I dropped my knight back to d2 early. So queen b3, mm, I'm expecting bishop c3. And I'll probably take with the B pawn, because then we have this diagonal for the bishop and this file for the rook. And that looks really promising. If he takes here, I'll probably take with the bishop. You could take with the knight, but I'd rather develop and keep the knight pressuring the E4 square. Because if he takes us, then the D pawn will no longer be defending the pawn on E5, and it could lead to quite a weak center. 
So I'm pretty happy with this position. It, it really does just feel like a very good version of the French defence. That's kind of the way that I'm seeing this position. So, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy. I can't complain. I think if he doesn't take us, then... Hmm, if he doesn't take on c4 and he doesn't take the knight, then what's the idea? I guess that's really the question we need to be asking. And f3 is certainly something that we could go for. That would be, you know, absolutely fine to play. I think another idea that we could go for is maybe bishop to e2. But okay, he takes. So we're going to take back with the b-pawn. And like I said, the bishop, if he does something stupid here, we could play bishop a3 to stop him from castling. He goes queen b6. Something feels a little bit off about this. So, okay, we have a few options. We can take, but then we open the A file for him. So, that's probably not the best move. Okay, so we could also take on D5. If we take on D5, we don't actually accomplish anything. C5 is also a move because it would attack his queen and force him to make a decision, but it does take some pressure off of the center because our pawn would no longer be going here. But we could bring our uh, other c-pawn up to c4 at some point if we wanted. If c5 and he takes us, after pawn takes, we have the open a file, and I guess c4 is on the cards, and we could start pushing the b-pawn down the board as well. I'm also tempted just to play a move like queen c2 to prepare rook b1 and just keep the queens on the board. Bishop a3 is also a move. If he takes us, then we can open the a file and we can stop him from castling. I'm kind of between bishop a3 and queen c2 right now. I feel like one of those moves is probably the best. Queen c2 I think is good. But bishop a3, queen b3, a b3, let's say bishop e6. The position looks nice. It does. Something like bishop c5, a6. I don't actually know how we're going to push for an advantage there. That's my issue. So I'm going to drop the queen back and prepare rook b1. Importantly, the queen defends b1 and a2, so when the rook goes to b1, it's defended. And if the queen steps over to the a file, we don't have to worry about the a2 pawn because our queen will be keeping an eye on it. So, that's pretty good. By the way, if you have made it this far in the video and you're enjoying the content, then if you're not already subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you do. And you can obviously get these videos recommended to you more often in your homepage to hopefully help you improve it at your chess. And, you know, hopefully you find this entertaining as well. So, and if you're already subscribed, then uh, I really appreciate you. Bishop a3 actually looks way more tempting now. I kind of just assumed he was going to castle, but he didn't. Rook b1 does skew with the queen and the b7 pawn. If he goes to a6, then we can just take on d5 with a discovered attack on his queen. This bishop isn't really doing anything. It's just kind of stopping our bishop from developing easily. If rook b1, uh, queen c7 looks like the move to maintain defense of b7. And then we can play bishop a3 and stop him from castling. So I think I'm going to go for that. I'm sure the queen has to step back to c7. Yeah. And now bishop a3. Queen a5 would target the bishop, but we can always just play a move like queen b3 or rook b3 or bishop b4. There's no real concern there. And the position looks really tricky for black because he's traded off his dark squared bishop for our knight on c3. Uh, so our bishop is kind of just unopposed. And he's put all his pawns on light squares. So he can't really challenge us on the dark squares. It's really, really good looking for us. I think we have to try and play really accurately now to try and capitalize on this advantage. The issue is my light squared bishop, really. Uh, we could throw the move h3 in, which I think I'm going to do. 
just because I'm giving the, him the option to come back to f5 or e6, so I can put the bishop on e2. Obviously, bishop h5 is the move I'm expecting, though, to keep this difficult to play. Although I probably could still play this and just take with the king. I could castle by hand if I want, but the king is actually quite safe on e2, I think. Um, Yeah, I'm actually going to go for that. Maybe it's an unnecessary risk, but I don't see how he actually exploits my king's position. He has no light squared bishop to do so. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually a fan of this. I like this. But it goes b6 to take some pressure off. That makes sense. f3 might even be on the cards. Although then, no, he can get in on the dark squares, so we shouldn't allow that. Um, Where's the breakthrough? Where is our breakthrough? Maybe a4, a5? Maybe? It's kind of difficult, actually. We could... Mm, then he can take... I don't want to take him, because I feel like that just helps him. Because he can just open the c-file up for himself. We could prepare with rook h to c1. He still can't castle, so that's really good. He might try something like g5, g4. But I think I can just let him take me, and I should be okay. Very interesting position. It's difficult to find the way in here. My knight isn't amazing. It, it, it just isn't. I might put the knight from f1 to g3, but then we do relinquish control of, b4, of c4. So maybe queen b3 is a good move. To control c4, put more pressure on d5. And then try and reroute the knight to the king side. Yeah, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. We're making it difficult for him to move the pawn or the knight. Because he needs to defend the d5 square. And he goes c5 anyway. Can't I just take d5 though? Because you just relinquished a defender. And if you take here, then I'm just going to take back. If takes something like castles. Mm, that just looks wrong. It just looks wrong. Let's take. He can't he can't advance with c4 because we control that square. I mean he technically could, but Queen takes, Queen takes, Knight takes, Knight takes. Check. Then he's in a lot of trouble. Okay, if c4 takes, then he loses this. I don't want to... Mm, do I want to take? I don't think so. I don't think so. How should I do this? My king is a bit exposed, admittedly, but... Okay, c4 looks pretty logical. If takes, then takes. I can always put the queen on e4. Sorry, e3. And my knight is doing a good job at monitoring some of the key squares. I just don't like my queen defending d5. Like, my queen's tied down by a knight. And that doesn't look right. My pawn... I'd rather my pawn tie down his knight. Because it's of far lesser value, of course. Okay, rook c1 looks like the move to me. Because I want to make sure c4 is well defended. Because he's obviously applying pressure on the C file. I'm playing a little bit quicker at this point. Because of course I know my time is low. And I do a 5 second increment. But 5 seconds isn't isn't all that much. When you get down to it. Uh, oh by the way. If you want to check out the previous episodes. Of the Karo Khan vs Everything Speedrun. Or indeed any of the videos on my channel. Featuring the Karo Khan. There are playlists linked below. If you want to check those out. E3 looks like a decent move. E3 does look decent. Because if I take with the pawn, the queen can get into G3. If E3 and I take with the queen, then he has rook E8. He doesn't find it though, which is very good news because it looked like quite a strong move. I think queen E3 for me is probably the move here just to try and offer a queen trade. If he accepts, it should 
not be a fair, not be an easy win, but should be a fairly simple conversion. Um, we're up a pawn, and we have a massive, like, blob of pawns in the center. We have a very strong bishop still. Our knight is doing a great job, and he does take. King takes or pawn takes. I would like to play pawn takes, but I'm worried about this knight coming into g3. And it kind of looks difficult to defend that square. So I might take with the king. And the king actually looks pretty safe on e3 because g4 is covered and d5 is covered. So there's no checking squares. We're also just applying pressure to e4 and blockading the pawn. c5 is the move I want to play, but it hangs a pawn. So we can't do that. Um, That's kind of annoying, to be honest. Kind of annoying. Can we defend this pawn easily? You go like knight b1, knight c3. We could try and put the knight on e3. With like knight f1, king e2, knight e3. We could go g4, g5 to try and kick this knight out. I think I like that idea. Because this knight is the annoying piece really. That is applying pressure. And if we kick this knight, then he'll also be relinquishing some defense of the e4 pawn, which we are applying pressure to. I don't know if I want to take it because we'll just be inducing a pin onto ourselves. But it's an option for later in the game because we could use it to tie his rook down to the defense. g4, I think I like that move. And if we go g5 and he plays something like knight to h5, he has no entry squares. So let's go, g5. I expected h6, to be honest. He drops his knight back to g8. That's why he played king h8. Okay. The knight can come out to e7, I suppose. We could take this pawn, but something like f5 takes, takes. There's a lot of pressure. I don't like that. I also don't think there's any need to be engaging in those kinds of things. I think we should just push c5. Maybe is knight e seven annoying? Is that annoying? You know, we might actually be able to take on e four with the king here because I don't see where the knight checks us. The knight can't go to either of these squares because we'll take it. If king e four knight g six check, we just fall back. And if king e4, knight c6 check, we just come back here to defend d4. I think this is probably the best move. And the point is that we just keep an eye on d5. And we're kind of threatening c6 with some attacks going on. So we're up two pawns. Our king is in the center of the board. I am aware it looks kind of shaky. But I think it's okay. I think we're okay. Because he has no useful discoveries. If he plays a move like f5 check, takes takes looks a bit uncomfortable. Mm, yeah, I'm not going to take you. No way. Hmm. Because I don't want to. I don't want a knight coming here. We could go c6. But then he can take there with check because it'll be discovered check. If we drop the king back and he takes on d5. Mm, don't know if I love that. Knight f3. Hmm. Is d6 good? Or could we just go h4 to defend the pawn? I think I'm going to go h4. If he goes f5 check. And... You go back to f3, and he takes on d5. The knight has no entries. I think we should be okay. You could argue you could have taken, but I don't want to take that. That feels like too much. We are still up a pawn as well. c6 looks like a good move, because this knight is running out of squares quickly. Because we're absolutely dominating the knight. Um, it's forward movement. And this knight looks pretty. But it can't actually do anything. My opponent also can't use the F file because our bishop controls that square. So that's useful. And our pawn is obviously two squares away from promotion. 
Will it promote? Probably not yet. But it will make it very difficult for Black to move. Because we're kind of just shoving it into his camp. Bishop f knight to f8. I think rook he one makes sense. We could play knight c4 to try and go to e5. That looks pretty nice. But I also like rook he one I also like that. Uh, whether it's the most accurate, I don't know. But offering a trade of rooks, I don't think can be a bad thing. Okay, knight to e6. Interesting. I think we should just defend d4. So let's play knight b3. It's not the square I wanted the knight on, but it's doing a job. a5 might be a good move to try and dislodge my knight with a4. And I can't play a4 in response. He's also controlling c7. If a5... Oh, no, he doesn't go for it. Okay. Bishop d6 looks good to me. Attacking c7, and I might put the bishop on e5. I can also now play a4 to stop a5, a4. The bishop here would be pretty strong. Um, Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And now maybe we can play c7. Our opponent is defending well. I think a4 might be our next move, though, to kick this knight out. If the knight goes to a3, it's probably just going to get trapped at some point. So it probably has to drop back to c7. We could push... Ooh, he takes. Wow. Maybe I should have taken with the rook. But taking with the... Mm, yeah, maybe I should have taken with the rook. But I've done what I've done now, so we'll live with it. Let's go knight d4, attack f5, control some important squares. g6, I could just push e6, because I do have a second passed pawn now. Knights are great blockaders though, so he is doing a good job of blockading me. He could play like knight to e7 as well. Um, Yeah, he's doing a good job. I think... Hmm. Let's play rook c4 and maybe go rook to a4 to try and induce some weaknesses. Because the c pawn is well defended and it's not even under attack anyway. Okay. Let's go back. Maybe I'm going to play a4 to take that square up. Okay, he's not threatening anything, so let's not respond. Let's just go a4. I might double rooks on the e file and put the knight on b5. His king can't get in either because we control these squares. If he takes us, okay, yeah, he doesn't take us. That seems smart. Um, oh my god, I nearly ran out of time. What am I doing? <laughs> That's such bad time management, honestly. I'm just trying to it's it's actually difficult to find a way through. That's the problem. It, to his credit, he's defending well in a very uncomfortable position. I think I want to play rook c to e2 and knight b5. I think that's my idea. If I can get in on the d file as well, that would be great. But currently, it's obviously blockaded. Let's do this. Mm, if he goes here, that's fine. Yeah, that doesn't really do anything. Let's offer a trade. He is attacking the sea pawn, though. Not going to lie, I completely missed that. Although, that's not really a problem, I don't think. If he takes, 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 then I just go rook c2. And we have a really nice pin. So, and then we can just double up the rooks there, and he will lose the knight. Okay... Let's put this rook on c1. So both pawns are now defended, and we're just threatening to push. We are simply threatening to push. Knight c5 is a move, but we can push anyway, because our knight defends the square. A attacks our rook. Let's attack his knight. He shouldn't have any good checks, because we cover both e1 and e5. Again, if he puts the knight on... C5, 
I guess. I guess that works. This is actually really difficult. <laughs> this is actually really difficult. Wow. How do I find a way through here? What is going on? This is so tough. I just hung a pawn as well. That is fantastic. Oh my god. Oh, and I hung a fork. Oh no. Oh no. Why don't I just do this? Uh, we might be okay. We might be okay. Because our pawns are very far advanced. I'm oh, really throwing this game though. We might be able to sneak our king in one of these ways. This is so scuffed. It really is. But I think we should be able to convert this just about. Because his pieces are pretty tied down and our pieces are doing a good job. So I'm like knight d5, king e5, knight c3, rook c2. We should be okay. Knight e4. I think, well, we can't actually get in there, but we can go f3 first to kick his knight out. Knight c5, king d6. Then we're threatening c7, which would be basically game over. Oh my god. Oh my god. The computer is going to absolutely scream at me in the post game analysis. Like, it really is. You can. You can you, you already know because yeah, I did waste a whole lot of time in the opening, let's be real. Um, which I think I need to try to improve on <laughs> in future episodes, but at least this should be winning. This should be winning. In fact, if Oh, my game's frozen a bit. Please don't do this. If knight e4, I think we can just go c7. F2 is defended anyway, but also our rook's on the C file. So instead of even giving him a chance to go knight C5 um, and block the file, we can just play C7. Also, I'm just going to refresh my page real quick and hope I don't get flagged because this is really, really laggy for some reason. Oh, please don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me, game. I might actually pull it up on my phone just so I can connect via my phone in case this does happen. Because I really don't want to lose for no reason. Okay, it's refreshing now. <laughs> for Christ's sake. Why? Why, game? Why are you doing this to me? Come on, refresh. Okay, he's moved. He's moved. Let me move, please. Please? My computer's frozen. I don't even know if the recording's still working. So, the game finally decided to reload, and um, I'd lost on time. I just lost on time, because it didn't reload in time. What? What was that? What was that? Oh my god, that's actually so, so frustrating. Like, I can't... I don't know what's wrong with chess.com. Why did that happen? Like, my computer is pretty good. There's no reason it shouldn't be able to run a chess game. Like, it's chess. It's not exactly... Techno technologically straining or anything. Oh, that's really annoying. That really is. Ugh, okay, let's do the game analysis. I'm actually really annoyed by that. But, I mean, we won. Like, we did. I would have won if my computer had worked. But it just didn't work. It's very frustrating, but... I mean, okay, let's go into the analysis. Um, Maybe that's just a bit of punishment for me taking so long about my moves. And maybe just an indication I need to move way quicker because that wouldn't have happened. If I'd have had like two minutes left on the clock, but ugh, it's just frustrating, really. Let's get into the analysis. 
I'll tell you what, I'd be really interested to know if this kind of thing ever happens to any of you that are watching. Like, where chess.com literally just freezes as you're in a game and it won't let you move. Like, while, you know, your clock's obviously still ticking down. Um, I would be interested to know whether it's, like, a me problem, in which case I need to fix it. But if it's not just me, then there's nothing I can do. But anyway, let's have a look at the game. So, C3 e5, d4, and d6. So obviously the best line is either to take on e5 and trade queens, but that's kind of boring, or to go e4. And I, I, I know these are probably the best lines. Also, just moves like queen c2 are fine, or h3, I guess keeping the bishop open. So let's say something like queen c2, knight f6, then I can go bishop g5, e3, knight f3, I guess. Okay, the computer doesn't love it, but again, it still wants e4. But I'm trying to play in the spirit of the Cairo Khan, so I didn't do this. Anyway, we go knight f3. My opponent pushes. We go knight fd2, and we get a typical sort of setup now. We can go c4 straight away, but e3 first is fine. Knight f6, c4. We start challenging for the center. My opponent goes c6, which is the only good move, because if he takes me then I just get really good development and he loses his grip on the center. And if he, play, if he plays a move like bishop d6 and we take, then I assume he's just worse because he loses e4. Or well, let's say, uh, I don't know, knight c6 takes, queen takes, knight c3. This is just a very easy position to play with my the um, white pieces. So he doesn't, he defends with c6, we go knight c3. Bishop to b4. Queen b3. Apparently queen a4 was a bit better because we pin this pawn and attack the bishop. I'm sure we've played something like this in a previous episode, actually. Like with queen a4. Although, I guess if he takes, takes castle, he's still fine. But anyway, yeah, we take... Sorry, we play queen b3. We have takes, takes, which probably isn't the best line. Queen b6. So, okay, we played queen c2, which is not that good a move. Bishop a3 is the best move. Now, I couldn't see, after queen b3, a b3, how we really prove an advantage. Bishop e6, this is the line I calculated. Bishop e2, knight bd7, cd5, cd5, and just c4. Computer quite likes this. I guess the point is that we're going to castle, probably put our rook on the B or C file, and black is just playing without a piece. And we have a lot of pressure on the queen side. I suppose that makes sense. I suppose it does. I went queen C2 because I wanted to go rook B1. And my opponent goes bishop to G4. And like I said, there was no way this was a good move. Absolutely no way. And we capitalize. We go rook b1. My opponent goes queen c7. Queen a5 was a bit better apparently. But obviously we can just take on b7. So positionally it may be better. But materially obviously not. And humans tend to be more material. So queen c7. Bishop a3. We stop him from castling. Uh, oh by the way. Um, I didn't say the um, accuracy scores. That's what I normally do. Why is game review not showing me them? Okay. I had 76.2% and my opponent has 72.4%. i am sure we played absolutely horribly in that endgame and that's probably what brought it down. Sorry, I just skipped a few moves. So yeah, here we go, h3, bishop h5. And I think bishop e2 was a mistake. Yeah, it actually was. So the best line is cd5. If cd5... Oh, come on, stop. Stop doing that to me. Guys, chess.com is really annoying me today. <laughs> it's making me want to switch to lead chess at this point. But uh, if cd5, cd5. Then I play a move for like queen b3. Attacking, attacking. And if he goes for like b6. Ah, then the bishop comes out to a6. And I'm just suffocating him. And then let's say, uh, yeah, how does he actually move? Like, all these pieces are doing nothing. 
I guess that's the whole point. Like, he can't move. And he can't put the rook on c8 either. And if he just shuffles, then g4, bishop g6, c4. Take. Knight takes. The knight might be coming in to, like, b6, c5. That looks pretty crushing. That looks pretty crushing. But yeah, we trade the bishop. So my opponent goes b6. Queen b3. c5. We capitalize with, with cd5. My opponent castles. I guess he blocks the diagonal, which is quite smart. c4 is a good move. Rook, a, rook fc8. Rook c1 is fine. Takes. Takes. And here I was a bit worried about e3. Because if f e3, then queen g3, I have to go rook h g1 to defend. And if queen e3, then he just goes rook e8. So the best move is king e3. Probably that is what I was going to play, to be honest, because I didn't see either of the other two being good moves. And if he gives me a check, then I go king f3, and I just claim that I'm safe. I guess I can run away of like g3, king, g2, but I am actually kind of safe. So, okay, I knew this was a problem, but he didn't play it. Queen f4, I go queen e3. We trade queens, which I was happy about. I think king e3 is slightly better, although f e3 might be more practical. I was just a bit worried about knight h5 here. Apparently that's a horrible move. Oh, I can just take on e4. And if here, I go king d3 so I don't get forked. Ah, tricky line to see. Tricky, wait. Oh, yeah, no, it doesn't work. Because if he takes here, check here, takes, takes, then uh, he doesn't win anything. He just trades down in a tactical way. So king e3, rook e8. I go g4 to stop any ideas of the knight coming in and also try and dislodge the knight. King moves, g5, knight g8. And the best move here, ah, d6 to stop the knight from coming to e7. The knight has no way out. Ah, I'm annoyed I didn't see that. And then we can just start pushing. It's really simple. But yeah, we kind of have low time. I went c5, which is the wrong move order. Knight e7, the best move is to take on e4. So I was happy about finding that at least. f6. H4, F5, King F3, Knight to D5. And we do play C6, which is good. Here we should have taken the Knight on F8. I guess that makes sense. I guess that does. Move the Rook, Knight E6, Knight B3. And yeah, here I was worried about A5, and it is a good move, but he doesn't play it. He goes Knight C7. Bishop to D6 I was happy with. Brings the Knight out. Move the bishop. And I feel like I'm playing good moves. But yeah, rookie 5 was just clinical here. Because we're attacking so many things. If um something like knight b to c7, I just take on f5. And I don't see how black has any counterplay. Yeah, that, that's annoying not to see. That really is. I played that way too quickly. I spent like what like two seconds on that move but i was so low on time it wasn't necessary for me to be that low on time anyway knight c7 knight d4 g6 we start pushing brings the rook over and here i was struggling to find a way in i really was and with low time i didn't really have time to think but i'm playing semi-decent moves like i'm playing good moves bring the rook back i'm trying to formulate a plan <sighs> And yeah, he brings the knight in. I move the knight. Knight there. Rook over. Knight in. Attack. Knight goes back. C7 is the move, apparently. The computer keeps screaming for it. After knight takes, knight takes, rook takes. Oh, I can just push E7. I can just push E7. He can't. He Like, he has to sack the rook or I'm going to queen. Hmm, that's annoying. That's annoying. Anyway, then I just get forked. So that was unnecessary. But I'm still okay. I'm still okay-ish. 
apparently it's a draw, but it's hard to see. The only way to draw is rookie eight, and I guess maybe king e7. Yeah, that's the only drawing mechanism. He doesn't find it. I bring the king in. Knight goes back, rook c2, and here I just run out of time. And the simple win is c7, and this is what I was going to play. And it's just game over. That's very annoying. That really is annoying because uh, not only did I have a completely winning position that I kind of blundered away. Well, kind of blundered away. My opponent needed to find a specific defensive setup. But the game was completely won and, and chess.com just didn't let me play a move. So annoying, but let's see if we can redeem ourselves in game two. Okay, game two against... Strix Cohen from the Philippines, I believe that is. Philippines, yeah. I thought it was the Czech Republic at first, but it's got a tiny spot of yellow on it, on the white bit. Okay, D4, D5. We have a classic Karo Khan. And let's pre-move CD5 because he might go for an exchange. He pushes. So in the advance, the typical move is bishop f5, but the line popularized by Gotham Chess, I, I, I think he popularized it, and the line that I like to play is c5, the Botvinnik Karls uh, variation. And you just immediately go for the center. If white takes c5, the issue for white is that he is a loose pawn on e5 and a loose pawn on c5, and it's very difficult to not give one of them back. Black could immediately win, like after dc5, Black could immediately, immediately play queen e5 check to pick the pawn back up. But it's better to play moves like knight c6, bishop g4, etc. just to put massive pressure on. And that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to continue saying, look, if you want to take this pawn, go for it. But there's no way you're holding on to it. Bishop b5 pins the knight. So we're going to return the favor and pin his knight to his queen. Now, obviously, this is not an absolute pin because he could move his knight. This is an absolute pin. If we play bishop to h5 here, and then he goes g4 and bishop g6, I feel like this is bad. I think we should probably take. Typically in the Karo Khan, if you pin the knight on f3 with bishop g4 and he plays h3, normally you should take when you have the opportunity. Okay, so can I take on d4? That's the question. Can I take? I don't see why not, to be honest. If he wins this pawn back, then cool. But I don't see why I can't take that. He takes my knight, which is kind of interesting. I didn't see a need for him to do that. Um, I think I can just play moves like e6 and c5 and hold on to this pawn, actually. Let's go e6. I also want to stop him from going e6 because that could kind of be annoying to make me play fe6 and then my bishop can't get out and this diagonal's weak. Okay, knight d2. The knight's obviously coming to b3 to attack the pawn. I think probably bishop c5. Bishop c5, knight b3, bishop b6. If he goes to something like rook d1, probably c5. It does leave g7 a bit weak, I suppose. If he goes for a move like queen g3. Hmm, that is a little bit annoying. But he doesn't, okay. Yeah, he plays what we expect. So let's drop the bishop back to b6. And now the bishop will support pawn to c5. And I think we should be able to hold on to the pawn. Okay, a4 obviously intends a5. So let's... We could go a6 and then drop the bishop back to a7. We could also go a5. Which I think I prefer. I think I prefer a5. <sighs> I don't know why, it just feels better. It just feels better to me. Maybe I don't like the pawn on a5 because he gets some control over the dark squares in my position. If I push c5, I know he'll have good control over b5, but I don't see how he accesses that square. Because his knight would have to be on c3 or d4 to do so. Ah, this is a move I missed. Queen g4 is just a double attack. Hmm. 
I am considering knight e7. And if he takes maybe rook g8. I don't think that works though. If king f8, knight d4. That is annoying. That is actually really annoying. And we can't go queen f6 obviously because of the pawn. We could go g6. G6, knight d4, knight e7 defending, c6, bishop g5, rook c8. I don't love it, but I don't think we have anything better. Maybe we, we misplayed this a bit. In this position... Maybe we could have just gone c5, knight e7. I don't know. Maybe we should have just given this pawn back. Or maybe we shouldn't have taken it in the first place. Either way. We're going to give the pawn back. That's not the end of the world. Not ideal, but it's not going to kill us. I think I prefer g6 over king f8 though. So let's go g6. I know it weakens my dart squares massively. But I don't see anything better. I don't want to take because uh, I feel like I'm going to get crushed. So let's go knight e7. I also don't want to play c5 because then he goes knight b5 and gets into d6. And that is very scary. That's a scary prospect. Okay, so bishop g5 is threatening to take and then we win c6. So I think rook c8 is the logical move here. To defend the c6 pawn. Hmm. Okay. Uh, wait. Did we? Could we have taken this? Queen takes. Knight f5. Bishop takes. Knight takes. And then after something like bishop 2. G5. Knight c2. Rook c1. Knight b5. Sorry. Knight b4. Defending c6. I might have just missed that. Hmm. Wait, can we do it here? Bishop d4, queen d4, knight f5, queen f4. Hmm, it doesn't really work quite as well, I don't think. Hmm. There, there. There. That's a queen d2. Takes, takes. He's threatening queen g7. So that's not great. We might just have to trade into an equal endgame. Mm, don't know how I feel about that. Do we trade the minor pieces or not? That's the question. That's the question. Takes, takes, knight f5. I mean, we don't have to take the bishop. We don't have to. We could play a move like queen b6. Or queen h4. That doesn't look terrible. There, there, knight f5. I think that's the best idea. I think that's the best idea. Knight f5. What if queen d2, queen h4, bishop... Yeah, see, so... Queen here, bishop here. Hmm... Maybe queen d4, but then he takes on a5. If here, 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 takes, takes, he gets the past a pawn. I don't think I love that. We may be able to stop it. Abs we probably can stop it, actually. I know his bishop gets in on the dart squares, but we actually have nothing on the dart squares for it to target. We can play moves like king d7 and get this rook out. Queen h4, bishop g5, 
queen b4. He could decline the trade, of course, with a move like c3. But then after, like, I don't know, queen c5, I feel like we're doing well. Well, relatively. Hmm. Of course, if he only takes, then we'll just take his bishop. We could take his bishop straight away, but the queen's coming to g7. We could play queen e7, queen g7, queen to f8, but then he can always come back. And I guess we could offer a... Oh, we can't even offer another queen trade because the rook would hang. Although, there, there, here, here, here. Nah, that's not great. No, I don't like that. If queen h4, bishop f4, we can't move the queen to b4. But then we probably castle. So let's do this. I know I spent a very long time on that move, but I think it was an important moment to try and find the best continuation. The bishop obviously can't come to g7 because the knight controls that square. Our knight's controlling a lot of key dart squares, which is very useful because we're very weak on the dart squares, as you can see from all my light square pawns. Because like I said, our dart squares are weak. But if we can trade the queens off, while the dart squares might be weak, there is actually nothing for white to really target because everything is on light squares for us. So let's say bishop g5, queen b4, takes, takes, which I think I'm going to do. If he, if he takes, I think we're happy, by the way. I think we're happy. If he plays a move like bishop f6, we can just play, and we could castle, but I'd probably play rook g8 because I want the king on d7. And then everything, basically, apart from our b4 pawn, will be on light squares and his bishop is annoying but it's not actually attacking anything whereas our knight can jump to either color complex and his bishop might actually just get stranded in our position and kind of locked out of the game so it's actually quite a promising position if he does trade the queens uh, whether he will trade the queens or not i don't know i think it's probably the wrong idea c3 looks like a better move but after queen b6, I mean, we're okay. We're not great. You know, our position isn't amazing. But yeah, after the queen trade, I am I know he's got the past a pawn. But I think we can stop it quite easily. We can go moves like c5 at some point. Our knight can always jump in to a square like d4. He's going to push. All right. All right. I think that pawn just gets stopped pretty quickly, though. If he goes rook a4, we just push. Okay, I think rook a7 is accurate. Because then we're preparing king d7, rook a8. Because if it pushes again, then we can't double stack. The rook goes to a4. c5, rook a5. Is that annoying? If we're four, we could just play a move like knight d4, though. Something like... Ah, no, but after takes, takes, he goes rook b8. Maybe castling was better, rather than rook g8. Rook a4, I think, is quite a, a semi-high-level move, though, and he doesn't find it. He goes rook fd1, which I think is the wrong idea. Because we're going to go rook g to a8. And our king can always come to c6 now if something like this, this. Okay, g4. Where's the knight going? I guess the point was to stop the knight from coming in. Valid. Knight e7, takes, takes. Rook here, rook here. Uh, 
I guess that's okay. I just don't love it. Knight h6, though. Mm, we're getting kind of stranded. If he pushes, then we're obviously great, because we jump back in. But knight h6. Something like bishop to g5, and our knight is just trapped. So let's go back to e7. If he gives us the option, I'll probably try to save the knight. Or maybe go something like c5, knight c6. But yeah, taking seems far more likely. And okay, a6, I guess the question is, is a6 a strength or a weakness? And we're going to argue that it's a weakness because it's just falling. If rook here, rook here, we can't go c5 because he'll take. If he takes, then we're just going to take with either pawn. Uh, probably the e-pawn to be, mm, I don't know. Here, here. Hmm. What if we take? Well, then he just attacks us. We could take en passant, though. Takes, takes. Rook a8. Rook b1. That looks okay. Let's do that. The c6 is kind of difficult to target. Yeah, let's go for it. I think worst case scenario, we end up a pawn up in a rook versus rook and pawn endgame. Sorry, rook and pawns versus rook and pawns. We could slow play this. With like king d7, king c7. There's a king d7, rook b7 takes, takes. We take here with check. King moves and then we just win the pawn. And if here and he moves the king so that rook takes a1 doesn't land with check, then we have time to go king c7. So that's a rook b7, rook b7, pawn b7, king b7. We defend our rook on a8. If king d7, rook b6, king c7, he has the same issue. I think this is more accurate than taking and allowing the rook into b7. I think this is more accurate. I am a bit low on time, but I think we're converting this position. Let's go king c7. It It's going to be a rook and pawn endgame where we're a pawn up. But I think we're covering white's infiltration, like his easy infiltrations by going king c7. And the c3 pawn is very, very weak. Yeah, so obviously we can't let him double stack. So... We need to take, but he might be trying to play rook f4. Ah, that's actually really annoying. Maybe we go g5? But g5, rook a4. And we don't win the pawn. Rook a6, rook a6, rook a6, rook f4. We can't go rook a7 because our king's in the way. g5, rook a4, king b6. Check. We can just drop back. That's a really good move from our opponent. There, there, there. c5, rook here. King b6. c5 rook here. King c6. It's not easy. This is really not easy. Maybe g5 is the best idea. I can't allow the rook to come to f4 because I'm just going to lose the f-pawn. So I don't see what else I can do, actually. Fair play to my opponent. He's finding some really accurate moves. Very, very accurate. And it's just exposing the power of this e5 pawn, I guess. Not exposing, showing. Okay, that I was not expecting. Because he just wants to come in here. Wow, okay. I don't know what I can do to stop that. No, I can't do that. I've got to take. I have to take. 
I didn't even consider that move. That's really powerful. And we are on the back foot, no doubt. No doubt we're on the back foot here. Wow. Wow, my opponent's playing some great moves. Really is. Um. Okay, let's try and win the C3 pawn. At least we're not getting checkmated. And we do have two passed pawns. So we should just invest. Let's push. I think we sh we we might be quick enough. We might be quick enough. There, there. Hmm. Let's just take. Let's take. Let's push. It's equal material. Push. We're stopping the rook from coming to either c7 or d7. Let's give a check. Let's go rook to f3. The problem for him is it's difficult for his rook to get back into the action. He kind of has to swing over to the b or a file, I think. But he's going to lose a few pawns if he does that. Because g4 and f2 are very weak. This might just be losing. I don't see what he does. The two can see two C three. Again, his rook can't help him. G six. Rook F one. That should be a win, I think. I think we're just too quick. I think we're too quick for him. I'm stopping him from coming to c8 or d8, importantly. And if he gives me another check, then I'll just go to c6 to avoid checks. But yeah, we're just promoting here. And there should be some kind of mate. With a queen and rook, his king's completely exposed. There'll be some sort of checkmate. And my opponent resigns. That was not a clean game. That really was not clean. Um, I feel like I misplayed the opening there. So it'll be interesting to see where I went wrong. But yeah, let's get into the game analysis. Okay, in that game, my opponent had 72.5% accuracy. I had 83.3. Really interesting opening. And I think I actually did go wrong where I think I went wrong. So this is just the advanced variation. C5. If white takes on C5, then you can play moves like knight C6. You can play moves like E6. It's very difficult for white to hold on to these pawns. So he plays knight to F3. We go knight C6. Again, if he takes, then it's kind of just the same scenario. This is probably the best line for white, though, to be honest. Uh, bishop E3, knight G to E7. You know, it's it's decent. I suppose... What? Is knight c6 even the best move? You can just take... Uh, I don't know, I don't like taking here. I don't like it. It's something like knight d4. I don't know, knight c6. Bishop b5. Bishop d7. It just feels a little bit off. Although I, I suppose you're kind of just facilitating some exchanges on c6 and it's just equal. But anyway, most people don't take because it's also quite scary to take. So bishop b5, bishop g4, and my opponent goes h3 and I take and this is kind of just a mistake from white. It really is. Bishop f3, queen f3 and yeah, cd4 is perfectly fine. My opponent trades, which was very confusing to be honest. Castles, e6, knight d2. And yeah, bishop c5 was a mistake. So we needed to go. I I, I didn't realize the danger of um, hanging the g7 pawn. I just didn't realize that. Rook c8 is a good move, preparing c5. Queen c7 is a good move, attacking e5 and preparing c5. Knight e7 is good, just developing. If knight to g5 
Sorry, knight b3. Queen b6 defends. Yeah, this is a much easy, a much better way of going about it. And the best idea for white is to try and give up the c3 pawn. And black should actually just continue defending. Because this pawn is now going to become a passed pawn. Maybe the knight goes on f5. Yeah, this is very nice. Bishop c5 is a mistake. Knight b3, bishop b6, a4. Here we should just develop. And if he goes a5, bishop c7, we can just do this. Again, this is really good. But yeah, I go a5, and I just missed queen g4. And here the best move apparently is knight e7. And after queen g7, knight g6? No way. No way knight g6 is the best move. King d7 is a move, which is crazy. No, I don't believe the engine here. I don't think knight e7 is playable. It kind of likes king f8. But I don't know. I don't like locking the rook out like this. So I go g6. My opponent takes. We go knight to e7. Bishop g5. Rook c8. This is another inaccuracy. Bishop f6 is a problem. If I move. Then knight f3 and my opponent is pretty winning apparently. Queen d7 breaking the pin. Queen f4? These are some weird moves. Yeah, these are some very strange moves, to be honest. I, The computer may say plus 2, but it's not an obvious way in. It's not obvious. He goes bishop h6. This is a mistake. And taking on d4 is the best move, so I'm glad I played that. Knight f5, queen d2. We can take on h6. Queen h4 is a mistake. So we should have taken, but I was really worried about queen g7. The computer just says rook b8, queen g7. Rook f8, queen h7, and we just take on b2. And if he defends, then what, h5? No, queen h4. And black is better. Okay, whatever. Queen h4, bishop g5. We go queen to b4. And after takes takes, white is apparently better. Bishop f6, castling is the best move, but rook g8 is okay. a5 is a mistake though, because we have knight d4. Ah, and yeah, I guess here our, our knight doesn't get trapped. And his bishop just is just bad, because he can't exchange it for the knight. C3, takes, takes. Knight E2, King H1, we just win C3. And if he plays something like... Oh, he can't play Rook C1, because then we give a check and win the Rook. I should have seen that. I got a bit spooked, and I played Rook A8. A6, again, Knight D4 is a move. Why didn't I play Knight D4? Ugh, anyway, we go rook a7, rook fd1, king d7, g4, and yeah, we bring the knight back, takes takes, c4 is a mistake because of en passant, which we find, rook g8, rook bd1, and here we just need to take, we don't need to be fancy, because after the exchange, yeah, we're fine, we just put the king on g7, we're absolutely fine, and we just up a clean pawn. I really need to work on these end games. No, you know what it is? You know what it is? I need more time. I need more time. Because I'm down to two minutes. It's not enough. And, uh, yeah, a minute 46 is not, not enough time here. I spent way too long in the opening. Way too long. King g2. King c7. Rook b4. Great move, by the way. And c5 is the only move to maintain advantage. After rook f4, we have king c6 opening up this defense. I saw this position, but I was like, how do I make progress? How do I make progress? Let's say my opponent plays a nothing move. I'm supposed to go rook b8. And then just infiltrate. And my rook does both jobs at once. And if he tries something like taking here, this doesn't work because we just defend. 
And even worst case scenario, if we have to sack our rook for it, it's not even that bad. But g5, g5, rook ab1, I did not see this move. If he doesn't have rook ab1, we're good. I didn't see it. And rook takes a6 is a mistake. c5 is the best move. And after rook b7, rook b7, rook b7, king c6, rook f7, rook a6, rook h7, then we invest in the pawn. Takes, takes, and we just push. And if my opponent gets too greedy, then he's losing. Rook a5 is the only winning move. Rook g5. d3. King f1, rook a1. Ah, the king is cut off. Okay, interesting. So he has to retreat, and then we just promote. Anyway, yeah, no, this is not good. Rook f7. I play the only move to hold on, which I'm happy I found with such limited time. Because the problem is, if he gets this move in, it's, we're, we're done. So rook 6a7, and this is an inaccuracy, because it allows us to exchange the rooks and go rook a3, and he can't defend this pawn. Here, it's completely drawn. But it's difficult to prove this. I think it really is difficult to prove this. And it's whoever can push their pawns the fastest. And I, my opponent just kind of got distracted, I feel like. King f1, like, just take. I'm going to push, but you have to invest in your pawns. And your king can get back at another time. Like, something like king f3 here, and it's a draw. But these end games are difficult. King f1. Rook h3 is a miss. My opponent is drawing. C5, this is very scary though, and that is a mistake. King e2 is the only move. Oh, King e2, rook g8, or rook g6. Rook g7 is not a good move. c4, king e2, d3, king d2, and we go rook f3, which is the only move. Rook f3 is the only move. So I'm really glad I found that with low time, and you just can't defend the pawn. If you go king e1, and we're just going to push. You're wasting time, and you can't play rook f7, obviously. So yeah, g5, and my opponent just doesn't have enough time. King f2, king c3, d2. I actually had a quicker win here. I probably should have found this. But either way, it doesn't matter. d2, king goes back, c3, g6, rook f1, and we're just controlling the promotion square. Of course, you need to be a little bit... You don't actually need to be careful. The only way to lose is rook f8. White can't stop you. Because no matter where you move, you control the d8 square, which is the important one. So we move up, he pushes, we queen, and it's completely game over. My opponent resigns in this position because checkmate will follow in, I'm sure, a variety of ways. So, yeah, I know this episode dragged on for a while. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.